let's talk a little bit about what I want you to come out of this seminar knowing. And the first thing and the most important thing is this. If I have 20-20 vision, does that mean I have perfect vision? And most people define vision as being 20-20. And there's a problem with that. There's several problems with that. But one problem with that is we don't sit in a world that's 20 feet away all the time with one eye covered and stare at a little chart. So our visual system involves so much more than that. We have to be moving, we have to be using two eyes, we have to be switching distances and space constantly. Um, so a lot of the kids and adults even that come into therapy have 20-20 vision and they haven't been shown to have a problem in a lot of their eye exams and we'll talk about that in a minute too. Um, because some of the other things haven't been tested. So I want to give you kind of a definition that vision is not the same thing as sight. So I would say the 2020 aspect is what I would call sight, not vision. <clears throat> so here's an example. Um, in schools, they do Snell and screenings where they're checking um, with the chart. 75% miss visual problems. And even a developmental screening, which is very in-depth, we done, did one last year up at a school, and it was probably a good 15, 20 minutes per kid. And that's not even as in-depth as an exam. That's just a screening. And even those miss 22% compared to a general eye exam. And a general eye exam I'm talking about is a developmental one where it's looking for that, uh, looking for specific things. Um, so this, do you guys know what this is a picture of? Have you guys ever seen this picture before? Okay, so can you all see it? So you know there's something up there, right? So this is an example that we need to use other things to use our visual system than just sight. And I'm gonna give you a, a couple clues. One, this is something that you see every day. Um, well, maybe not every day, but you've seen it many, many times. You guys all know what it is. Do you get any, any, but he have a clue as to what it is? No, it is an animal. <laughs> so I'm going to give you a clue. These are ears. A bear. This is a nose. It's a cow. That's right. And another interesting thing about how our brain works with our eyes is, um, would you say that the picture is of a boy or a girl? Or both. <laughs> so which one looks more male to you the right or the left okay so this one is just an example of how we use like um, contrast to kind of make decisions about things so this is same person but one has different contrast than the other and then of course you've seen pictures like this um, is it a lady and an old man under a bridge or is it an old general and then, is this a van painted fancy, or is it more than that? <laughs> and then, this one's kind of interesting because we actually get a perception of motion as we look at it. So, and there's tons and tons and tons of stuff that you could look at. It's very interesting. If you go to my website, indepthvision.com, there's kind of a fun little area where you can go in and look at all kinds of stuff um, visually. So why should we care about this? Um, so probably one of the biggest things that happens is we get a lot of kids that are fidgety, they're moving all around, they're not doing, staying at task, and um, we're labeling them ADHD or ADD or um, dyslexia or anxiety or spectrum disorders. There's not, it's not to say that they don't have those kind of things, but a lot of what we see has the same symptoms with a visual development problem. Um, and, and of course, they can be comorbid. You can have more than one thing going as well. But if you can fix something, why not fix it rather than just label a problem? Um, there's also this huge demand on near point. Everything's getting smaller and more technological, and everything's close, close, close. And we weren't designed as human beings to be that way. And our visual system needs movement to get proper development. And we're doing less and less of that as well in our schools. Um, so computer vision syndrome, have you guys ever heard of that? Because this is a lot of adults have this problem. 
eyes are dry, they're strained, they're hurting, sometimes doubling, because they can't manage this distance, even with a prescription. And um, you actually can do therapy for that as well. Uh, and the physical movement, you know, is being de-emphasized in our schools. Um, social interaction, exercise, healthy nutrition. So, as many, among children that are reading disabled, as many as 80% show deficiency in one or more basic visual skill. And I'm so glad that you're here and you work with kids that are having reading problems. Um, because if I could get this out to everybody that works with kids and reading problems, that would be great. Just because it's a way to get people um, the care that they need. So I have a colleague who um, was instrumental in this juvenile delinquency study that was done probably 40 years ago. And they actually went into juvenile hall and they did visual testing and they found that a lot of them had visual processing problems. And they did vision therapy on these people and they didn't get rearrested. What do you know? Um, and so it's, it's a thing that can affect behavior because when you're labeled and you can't do things that everybody else can do, it makes you feel terrible. Uh, vision therapy can prevent and remediate amblyopia, strabismus, as well as other visual problems with the use of lenses, prisms, vision therapy, and generally without surgery. And there's two camps on that because there's the ophthalmological camp that wants to do surgery and they don't really want to do orthoptics, although I will let you know, and I'm looking right at you because I know we have background there, um, that UC Davis just hired an orthoptist, which is kind of a, it's kind of a segment of what I do. I do a lot more developmental than just orthoptics, but they work with lenses and prisms to try to change the dynamics of the visual system, so they're kind of getting into it too. Um, I actually want to, get a meeting with that orthoptist. She comes from England. Um, and vision therapy uh, can also help people that have had acquired brain injury because as you're going to see, the visual system is the entire brain. So um, there is a, a man, a doctor named William Padula, and he is uh, a very, very well-known neuro-optometrist, -optom and he has this amazing quote, the infant begins to trust his visual process as he develops visual perceptual experiences that are reinforced by other senses, audition, touch, and kinesthesia. Of the three million nerve impulse pulses that travel to the brain each second, two-thirds are generated from the eye. The majority of the sensory nerve fibers in the entire body originate from the eyes. And if you look, you know, most people think of the eyeball out there on their own, but we're talking about the optic tra the optic nerves coming down and there's a chiasm and it comes back here. But all this area of the brain is working with eye motor movement, perception, um, teaming, all of those things. So I'm going to simplify the system a little bit. Um, if we think of it as a computer system, we can talk about the input skills, the processing, and the visual processing, and then the output skills. And of course, it's, it's never this simple. <laughs> um, and vision perception leading to learning. 